Greetings and welcome to Epic Battle Cry! This is the place where we cut through the crap to bring you the real deal on the gaming industry today! I'm Brent Adams, joined by my visionaries of violence, my seers of slaughter! That's Daniel that's Kaiser intro. and Tony Grice! Sick... What's going on, fellas? Man, dude, you really knocked it out of the park with the you intro. You really know how to write those. Like, whatever, yeah. <laughs> how did you come up with those this Also, week? it is debatable now whether or not we're cutting through the crap to get to the real deal. Because some people are like, you're not cutting through any crap. You're just answering questions. And it's like, well, yeah. I mean, whatever. What do you want? We're just. <laughs> what do you want from us? What do you want from me? Happy Wednesday, Second everybody. thought, don't tell us because yeah, we probably can't do it. <laughs> It's hump Whatever day. It How's everybody? I was going to say, some of them have actually been quite clear on what they want. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. it's Wednesday. Nice. The 23rd of July, and of course, Wednesday is actually Don't forget that. Odin's Day. You're <laughs> oh. welcome. You're all welcome. No, wait. How, what no, does that even where, mean? where does the word Odin fit in with Wednesday? Is there a story? How does Wednesday come about? Uh, it, it's called Old English. Okay. And uh, in in old English, uh, Odin you said that was, as if I'm stupid. It okay. was probably it was probably pronounced closer to Woten. Woten. Um, so like yeah, Odin. Really. So they couldn't say Odin. So they said Woten. And well, then that you became know, it's, Wednesday. It, it's debate. It's debatable. And I'm but stupid. It's debatable. But the uh, but anyway. <laughs> but one of the like one of the, the pronunciations of Odin like would have been Woten. And so Woten, Woten's Day, Wednesday. That's kind of how that's kind of how you get there. Basically, thousands of years of of linguistic evolution and bastardization mm. has taken us from Odin's day to Widden's day but uh, mm. anyway that is uh, that is why today is the day that it is okay I'll, I'll, that's a I, great question from <laughs> that was a great question from at Daniel Kaiser <laughs> do we have a real question we though, do have a real question day? it comes from Alistair Langfield who you have to say uh, Alistair, is uh, at you have, you have to say AD so Langfield no, on didn't. Twitter and uh, he says, at Epic Battle Axe, I'm bored. Hashtag and I hope, I. <laughs> And I hope the Rift and other VR headsets will offer truly new experiences. Do the Axe Lords agree? Yes. Chimera 6. And I think that's I think Chimera 6 is the, the handle he, uh, he uses on EpicBattleAxe.com, where he is, of course, a member of the mighty Axe Head Army. Uh, getting to your question, Alistair. Yes. Um, do you guys think... That the Oculus Rift and that the uh, the and I guess also the uh, the Sony Morpheus mm -hmm. uh, are going to uh, offer truly new experiences. Tony, yes. Okay, good <laughs> answer. And no, I, no. I I really do. You know, we've we've talked a couple different times about VR headsets and in relation to uh, a book called Ready Player One, which mm -hmm. is actually one Brent you you turned me on to. You got me an audio. Yeah. Uh, version of it uh to to because i can't read <laughs> and um anyway as but we in all find seriousness, out at least a couple times a week here on this show <laughs> and uh but anyway it was uh it, it was a really really interesting story and and if you if you haven't read it one i would say go out there and read it or have somebody read it to you if you're like me like at and, night, uh, preferably going, will wheaton you're, preferably you're will wheaton in. you know yeah yeah Maybe that is yeah will wheaton was actually who uh i mean will wheaton was uh, who uh, read the uh, read the audiobook and actually was really cool. But anyway, the the you know the kind of the overall arcing you know part of the story is that you know the the world is in really rough shape, but people sort of escape that in the virtual world in, in this in the the virtual world that's built within the story, and it's and it's hyper real realistic. I mean, basically, like when you are in this this virtual real you know uh, realized world, it is every bit as real to you as the outside world. Indistinguish and almost indistinguishable from the real world, as they it, say. Exactly. And I do think that that, that is coming. I, I, I have no doubt in my mind that that is coming down the road. I do think that it's probably generationally away from us at you know at this point. Like so, I mean, it's 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 a ways down the road. And just for um, context, the book takes place mid-century. The, the book takes place like you know twenty forty four, something like that. Twenty forty four, something like that. But uh, but but anyway, I think these the the current stuff because you're asking specifically about Rift and like other VR headsets like Morpheus and things like that. Yeah. I I really am sort of mildly apprehensive to say yes to, to that because I, I sort of feel like because this is you know really the first versions of these that we that we are seeing I sort of feel like just like 
I don't know, just like any new technology. You think of like the first generation 3D game consoles we had. It really took, even though we had some really cool games in, in the early days, it took quite a few years before they really kind of figured it out and got it got it really right. The technology had to sort of come up, you know, catch up. The, the next generations had much more power and things like that to make things look more realistic. And, mm-hmm. you know, it sort of took that time to really, you know... To, to get it sort of fully realized. Now, I, I think it's more important with VR because I think in VR, you, it really, the realism, uh, I, I think, is a, is a thing that really would make that work that much better is if the worlds feel that much more real. It's not to say you can't have sort of, you know, um, games that have like a certain look to them. Like they've even got that one uh, demo that they've played a lot now where it's sort of like a Killer 7 sort of look, like black and white with red bullets coming at you that you duck out of the way of and mm-hmm. things like that. You know, mm-hmm. so you can have very stark looking games, but uh, I think kind of the realism piece is what's really going to have people falling into this world. And I think sort of falling into that virtual world is what you'll need to make it feel like it's not just a current gen game that you're playing for through a right. new perspective. Okay, you know, I feel like that's what we're going to see for a long time is current generation or you know better looking you know games, but you're still just looking at them from a different perspective. Yeah. So that, As opposed to well, a, quote, truly new experience. Uh, truly a new, like, something that could only be done on that hardware. Right. Yeah, and, as and he's that talking way. about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. DK. Yeah. What, uh, what's your take on this? Well, I do agree. Think that VR headsets will offer truly new experiences, but, again, not for a while. And here's the reason, because the companies that are behind them want this to be a reality. Um, I think it is more... Um, desirable than what we've seen in the last generation. Now, let's let's consider that we're talking about interactive entertainment, okay? Interactive entertainment has always required us to be a part of the equation to give some sort of input, whether that is with an Atari joystick and one button, or it's a, you know, eight-button controller, or it is something that is the next evolution. Eight buttons is way too much. Come on, who needs eight buttons? Right, so... <laughs> What we saw in this last generation was they thought that the evolution of that was motion, that you would stand in front of a control uh, of a controller, uh, rather uh, a device, and yeah. use your body as a controller. Uh, but that up till a few months ago, some of was, them thought it was this generation as well. I was right. going to say, but that was before all those people were fired from Microsoft. That's true. <laughs> but the, I think the reason why that didn't work was because it didn't translate. Um, to a, a a different enough type of experience to to be truly revolutionary um, or a new experience. I mean, it was a new experience. The Wii was I definitely just, an experience. I think it was an experience nobody wanted. It's, it's an experience that nobody well, wanted. I think it's an experience that needs to. other things with it before Correct. it becomes impressive. Like, now, it's just, I see that in tandem yeah. with, like, you could think of motion controls as kind of offsetting the VR to, to actually, you know, provide data to the game which that they, is going you know, to... Which they do. I mean, VR right. does use a form of motion control usually for, uh, you know, for, you know, to help with the head tracking. Exactly. Well, and, and the Morpheus, they've shown the demos use the, the move controllers. I mean, so they do yeah. sort of tie in a, a physical controller that we've already used in some... Well, I'm, I'm kidding. Nobody <laughs> Not that we've either. used it. But, Not that but, we uh, have, But, yeah. you know, they use that to control, like, you know, holding stuff, which is exactly what they did before, but it, it just works so much better now with that. Right. Well, it, it, it seems like they were putting the pieces in, in place for that for a long time. I mean, you, you know, the, the light bar on, on the PS4 DualShock... Yeah. Uh, or the DualShock 4, you know, they it's like, oh, it's got this light on. Everybody's like, what the hell's a light for? And they're like, oh, it helps with motion tracking. Of course, you know, now and they've it, come out and said, oh, well, it's it's part of the Morpheus platform. Yeah. And, right. and they do that We just couldn't the tell you that. As well. Right. It has a little so red all the gra- ground has been laid for that. And I do see that ultimately there will be truly new experiences. I, I personally, I've been very down on the VR thing just because... Um, I don't know. Like I, I, Daniel I wanna... hasn't conquered reality yet. So he's, <laughs> Fair he's, point. He's, he's, he's sort of apprehensive to jump to virtual, virtual reality. reality. No, I've got friends that are like super, like they can't wait to see it. They they envision, you know, going through games like Assassin's oh, yeah. Creed or, yeah. or That's whatever and, yeah. and just want to do it. And I'm not, I don't know. I, I need to see it to, to believe that it's something that I need because for me, like the, the things that really speak to me about gaming are more about the storytelling the 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 ability to kind of um feel like you're immersed in the world and which this could help obviously but i feel like there's like so much that that needs to happen in order for that to take place that i'm pretty skeptical about it so, yeah. so uh, until to, to we be, reach the, yeah, better, sorry, you know more iterations of the hardware better technology and also again 
let's not forget the number one thing to me about VR working, and this is what I've said, and I was actually, you know, I was porn on it. <laughs> of course, that's the question. To You're everything. not wrong. No, but the the one thing that made me really happy was like reading a post E3 article with Miyamoto who he said you know we don't want to necessarily go in that direction because we're trying to create games that are about playing together and these types of experiences whereas virtual reality feels very singular and you're kind of immersed in this thing and and we don't really want to do that and maybe it's better like I've said all along I feel that VR can facilitate the return of arcades or an evolutionary version of arcades you go well, to this setting sure. to be able to do that because in a nutshell if you, if it does you've read, require if you've movement. read ready player one that's a huge yeah. part of the book i have it and actually i i think i'm finally convinced i'll probably go out and buy it after this recording but here the, the bottom line for me is that i don't want to sit in my living room and strap on a headset and look around and feel like I'm moving. But if you told me that I can go into... Now, look, we've done things like this for years. Do you think about, like, you know, I can play a first-person shooter or I can go play laser tag, like, with my friends, right? Mm -hmm. So if I can go strap on a helmet in, in an environment that is kind of like an arcade or uh, a, a facility built for that, and that facility becomes a virtual reality that I would actually like and this is what I've maintained the whole time if I can go to a, a sp like imagine building a place to where you could hey what, what world do you guys want to be in do you want to be in Halo do you want to be in Assassin's Creed do you want to be in Mass Effect and you go through and you're doing all this different stuff like to me that would be amazing that would be a great use of VR and but sitting on my is, couch and like just looking to the left and looking to the right like I don't know that that and doesn't really seem I, amazing. I, I, to and me. just to be clear, just to be clear, uh, you know, so we're kind of having full disclosure here. None of us have used uh, the Oculus Rift or, or any similar VR yeah. headset yet. Is that right? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I can only go by I can only go by what I've been told. But um, you know, several You've been of my lied friends, to all your life by everybody, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Laura in chief among them. But several uh, <laughs> several people I know that have used the Oculus Rift say that. There's basically the world before you put this thing on, and the world after you put this thing on. That mm -hmm. it, 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 like once you've, like once you've experienced what it offers, your understanding and appreciation of it fundamentally changes. And and so obviously, you know, I've not had it's a tr it's a transcendental e experience, in other words. Mm -hmm. And uh, and obviously, Fact I haven't. Those. I none of us have have had that yet. But for my own part, the thing that. The thing that the thing that I kind of agree with, and I think that you know that both of you have, have kind of touched on this, is that I think that it will take time uh, for the platform to offer a quote truly unique experience, as as Alistair is asking about. I think it will take time for the platform to get to that place because it's going to take time for people to kind of understand the paradigm, you know, in the same way that it took, it, it took time for people to kind of figure out, you know, how do we adapt platformers into, into 3d games? Um, right. And, and, and similar kinds of hurdles. I think that those are the kinds of things, you know, it's going to take a little while for people to kind of really understand like, well, you know, what is it that would make a, a truly great VR experience uh, as opposed to just adapting a video game into VR. Not to say that that can't be good, not to say that it can't be compelling, but as opposed, to, but you know, that's as I think, you know, Tony was alluding to, that's kind of taking an existing, an existing paradigm uh, and just putting a new interface on, on it, it. as yeah. opposed yeah. to designing an experience that is specifically about taking advantage of what virtual reality offers. So I, I do think that it'll probably take a little bit of time for uh, for people to kind of get that, but I don't think that I, like I don't think that that's like decades and decades and decades away. I think that because I think that you can have that without having it be you know hyper hyper photorealistic graphics. I, I think that designing experiences specifically for VR, you know, there are people that are already doing it, and, and as far as like mainstream success on that, yeah, I, I don't think that that it's too much farther away. But I agree that it will take time for people to really explore the medium as one for gaming and start designing things around it that do offer something that you can't get out of a video game that you're playing with your television. Yeah. I think that's, that's a very good question. I, I really, I think it, and I think 3D is, and it, you know, like I said, we, we haven't actually tried ourselves, although I don't think, you know, 
I think sometimes your your opinions can be slightly colored by something too. If if you are, if you are dedicated enough to get in early on something, that usually shows that you you kind of already are sort of biased towards you believe in it and you really think it right. is. So I think just just the fact that you know, I, I, my whole thing is I think it is still just one piece of a end result that's going to be very awesome. I think just changing the 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 way you view something. I mean, similar to like a 3DS. Does a 3DS completely change the experience because you can see it in 3D? You know, no, it doesn't. It just gives you a new perspective on it. Now, it, it, you know, I think yeah. it's kind of a cool perspective, <clears throat> but being able to see things in a different world won't yeah. necessarily give you... But now, if, once well, you can move in 3D, once you can like have those, you know, they have those things that they've shown where people stand in and they're sort of like yeah, locked the, in the middle of the, the little omni, pad. The Omni that, treadmills. The Omni treadmills and stuff. Like, I got to be honest, like I really am starting to look at those and think, okay, you know... Maybe the, the the turn where that's coming a few you know a year a few years closer than I thought, where you really can be fully immersed in a game. Yeah, that changes that that to me is where we start to see like completely new experiences. Yeah. that uh, you know I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I agree. All all those are important pieces. Yes. So agreed. Alistair, thank you for the question. Hope you enjoyed the answer. If you have a question for us, or if you have a news story that you'd like us to comment on, if you have anything you'd like to see discussed on a future episode of Epic Battle Cry, you know where to find us, at Epic Battle Axe on Twitter. We love getting your questions and suggestions there. Uh, you can leave us a comment on the show. Check us out on YouTube, where hopefully you're watching us now. Please like the show. Subscribe to us on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash Epic Battle Axe. And of course, We'd love to hear what you have to say over on EpicBattleAxe.com if you're a member of the Axe Head Army. We'll be back tomorrow with another edition of Epic Battle Cry. Until then, cry havoc and let your voice be heard. Hmm. I wonder if he's related to Alistair Crowley. I don't know, but that'd be damn cool if he was. He sounds just like my mom. My mom, every time she sees the name of somebody, she's like, hmm, his last name's McEnroe. I wonder, I wonder if he could be related to John, John McEnroe. McEnroe. <laughs> and I'm just like, do you realize how many, how many fucking McEnroe? thousands of McEnroes out there? Do you I mean, realize how many he? bastard yes. Scottish children are out I there in the world? I wonder if he's related to Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>